Hi, I'm Dr. RJ Burr with Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center. And to continue on our Zoom injury prevention series, today we have Mr. Scholar Zarnt, who is, well, formally, we'll get into that, but he's a, is a strength conditioning coach at the, the University of Michigan, primarily working with the basketball players. And uh, I knew know, uh, Skyler through, as a colleague, through um, um, like the, we say the workshops and a lot of the um, overlapping education that we do in the rehab and physical performance realm. And um, uh, Skylar has actually worked with me in the office before, and he's invited me to um, U of M to do, to check out what they do there. And we've uh, established a relationship from there. So I thought, hey, it would make sense to have him on here and share his experience with working with college and professional athletes and share his knowledge and how you guys could apply that to your health and fitness journey. All right, Skylar. So um, I gave you a little plug there. You can maybe fill in some of the pieces, but maybe, um, Hey, uh, what got you into strength and conditioning? Maybe some of the stuff that you did where you went to school, um, kind of a little brief intro and then um, we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the intro. Yeah. So I'll probably start in, in college and then run through it real quick, but I went to the university of Iowa, uh, majored in athletic training there. And when I graduated, I had zero clue what I really wanted to do because I don't think I was a very good athletic trainer, but I ended up getting a job at Bradley University as a kind of a joint athletic trainer and strength and conditioning coach because at the time I was starting to lean a little bit more into strength and conditioning. I was there for a year, then I went back to Iowa for, for grad school um, in athletic training as well. And I was a teacher's assistant, but always had my eye on strength and conditioning. So whenever I got done there, I actually found myself with a job uh, in Arizona with the Arizona Diamondbacks, a uh, minor league organization. So I was there for, for five years and that organization really kind of shaped my philosophy and a lot of the stuff that I believe now. I ended up moving back to Michigan because I met my then girlfriend, now wife down in Scottsdale and she's from uh, Detroit metro area and she wanted to be back here. So I moved back took a job working uh, in a neuro clinic as an athletic trainer with spinal cord injury and traumatic brain injury clients. And that was uh, different and that was a little rough. Found my way then back into strength and conditioning at the University of Michigan, like you said, RJ. And I worked with uh, men's and women's basketball, assisted them. And then I also took care of the golf teams. And so there for, for two years and then kind of as you alluded, um, you know, some life circumstances changed a little bit. And so uh, now I've pivoted and now I, I mean, st I still see myself as a strength coach, but now what I'm sure. doing is selling uh, uh, medical devices for, for pain relief, non-opioid alternatives specifically. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. The, um, well, since uh, we're on that subject now, so my next question typically is how has COVID or quarantine affected you? So we know obviously that, you know, this has affected in the way of um, you've had to pivot. Um, would you mind sharing, uh, you know, what happened in that experience? And yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So initially, so whenever everything kind of, kind of happened, uh, it was, it was fine because it was, it was, I got to spend time at home doing daddy daycare. So at the time I had a, she must've been eight month old daughter. And so I just got to spend all day with her every day. So initially I was like, this is fantastic. My wife was working from home. So I just got to spend a lot more time with them time that I typically wouldn't. And I got to catch a lot more moments firsthand, which is you can't get that stuff back. So for sure. extremely it's grateful. Lot, right? yeah. yeah. Extremely grateful for stuff like that. I mean, saw her first steps, saw her kind of transform into a, a full walker, if you will. That's awesome. Um, and now she's doing kettlebell swings, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, so yeah, then <laughs> probably in, it might've been late April or early May, uh, I was informed that obviously due to the uncertainty uh, with the athletic department and not knowing how much revenue they were going to bring in that uh, my position along with three other strength coach positions uh, at the university were not going to be renewed. So that was, you know, no one wants to hear that. And that's kind of like, a, Oh, okay. Well, my contract ran through July. So at least I had some time to, to think about what I wanted to, to do next. And after, you know, after a lot of, uh, talking with my wife, a lot of prayer, just a lot of soul searching, if you will, you know, we decided that we don't want to move. So the life of a strength coach can obviously be very, very transient. It can be um, kind of up and down as far as yeah. where you live, right? So you can't be picky about where you live. 
unless you just have a sweet job and you're really good at it and everyone loves you because then you can have that job for a long, long time. But mm -hmm. in my case, if you want to move up in the ranks, typically what you have to do is you have to take a job somewhere else, right? So not every place has glamour strength and conditioning uh, positions open, right? And usually yeah. people who are there don't ever leave. So I talked to a handful of other coaches, uh, basketball coaches at the time, because that's what I was going to get into. And then, like I said, after, after some talking with my wife, we decided, you know what, right now is probably not the best time to, to move halfway across the country for, you know, three, four years. And then after that, then who knows, because if the coach goes somewhere else, you could have to go somewhere else as well. So yeah. we just didn't really want to kind of uproot ourselves. So uh, I decided to, to pivot yeah. and use my existing knowledge, if you will, and uh, hopefully transform that into at least a part-time career in medical device sales. And, you know, who knows where that's going to go, but, you know, obviously COVID, COVID even affects that. It's yeah, places aren't open, uh, business is down. So obviously it affects everybody, but yeah, you know, you just kind of have to roll with the punches, I guess. Yeah. Well, dude, this, this adversity shows that you're obviously a great husband and dad because, you know, to be able to do that and say, you know what, we're rooting here and we're not going to move because of me. That's, that's, that takes a lot. And that's awesome, man. That's very commendable. And I appreciate you for that. Thank you. The, um, Cause I know you're a phenomenal strength and conditioning coach. There's not many strength and conditioning coaches that are well versed in the things that you are like the DNS stuff, PRI, so on and so forth. So you'd be a phenomenal hire anywhere, but you're right. You just not a lot of stuff's open and then you'd have to pick up and move somewhere else. That just makes it challenging. And I totally agree. And, uh, as we talked before we hopped on this meeting is I was worried too. And if I had to pivot, I wouldn't go take a, a chiropractor or, you know, a clinician job in a different state. I wouldn't, I'd stay here and probably do something else. As I mentioned, you know, like a medical sales, you know, because we've implanted our roots here, we're going to stay here. And, you know, it's, we're very purpose driven and that purpose is family first. And if you have to pivot and take and do something that's maybe not exactly our passion right now, that's okay. You know, but uh, we're both driven people. So, you know, we'll, we'll ultimately do what we want to do and, and, and so on and so forth, not worry about it. But Hey, this is, this is the path that we all have to take in order to reach our goals. Right. 100%. Cool, man. Yeah. I love it. All right. So we'll move on from some of our, it's good, but our hoorah is a lot of <laughs> philosophical and uh, spiritual stuff. And we'll go on to um, a little bit more like strength conditioning stuff cool. um, to help the audience with injury prevention. Since that's the series is all about injury prevention and getting some people, some good coaches on, um, on a zoom meeting and uh, share some good information. So my question for you, we'll do a little bit different than we've done in the previous ones because you're not working mostly with, you know, recreational or general population. It's typically college high level athletes, potentially professional athletes. Um, and you can take this question wherever you want, but what is maybe one or two things that you see the college athletes not doing that they could be doing that could make a much bigger benefit? And that would also be a nice recommendation for our audience of like, hey, maybe you should focus on this stuff and not worry about all the little fancy, you know, bells and whistles that are not going to give you much benefit. Right. So I think initially when you when we talked about this beforehand, I had one, one thing in mind, but now that you ask it again, um, I'm a big fan of, of the low hanging fruit idea. Right. So and I think that's very prevalent in the collegiate athlete. They obviously have different lifestyles. They have different social structures, everything that they do is just a little bit different because you're surrounded by, you know, 30,000 of your peers in a very small area. And it's just that time is, is kind of different in your life. So, uh, but this applies for everybody. But what, what I see in college a athletics is, you know, especially with the, with the basketball players, you know, everyone wants to, to reach a certain level. Everyone wants to be in, in peak physical shape. Everyone wants to just be the best that they can. But what they don't understand is that it's not this one new exercise that's going to change your life. It's not this supplement that's going to change your life. It's the, it's the little things that they could do on a daily basis that would have the impact, the biggest impact. Right. And you know that it's, Hey, you're not feeling great today. Let's, let's analyze that. Why not? What time did you go to bed last night? Well, I was up till two o'clock in the morning uh, playing call of duty. Okay. <laughs> so that's a place to start. Like you don't have to I mean, I'm not saying you have to go to bed at eight 30 cause that's not realistic either but why don't you try going to bed at 11? See how you feel the next day, right? Just add in one thing at a time. Uh, how much water did you drink today? What did you have for breakfast? Um, what quality of foods are you putting in your body? Have, were you laying in bed all day before practice? Or did you get outside? Did you get some sunshine? Did you get some vitamin D? Did you get your body moving? 
Uh, are you in a good headspace mentally? Like, do you have daily affirmations that you say to yourself? All these little things that they're just not sexy, but they apply to absolutely everybody when it comes to uh, increasing your fitness, increasing your health, increasing your overall well-being. These are all little things that, I mean, I, I, I'm the first to admit that I don't always do the best job of it either, but whenever I do do a good job with those types of things, I notice an immediate impact. Everybody knows, hey, if I go to sleep a little bit earlier, like I wake up with more energy, right? If I, if I put down the Instagram for, you know, last hour before bed um, and I wake up in the morning and it's not the first thing that I do, if I get outside and I see maybe the sunrise or I get a little natural light on my body, like those things are going to play a role in how the rest of your day goes. So, you know, nothing specific to, I guess, collegiate athletes, but something that everybody can benefit from that I would tell my athletes like start here and then once you've gotten those things down or you at least have a handle on it then we can advance to you know the 201 the 301 courses where now we can start to deep dive a little bit more into like okay now that you can do this stuff let's start to to get a little bit more sexy yeah totally it's a it's the slow drip, right? They say that uh, if a drip of water goes on a rock, you know, over and over and over again, eventually it eats through it, right? It's those, those yeah. little bits that add up. Totally true. And, and we all like, we all know that, but you know, we have this, this human um, um, behavior that we have that we, you know, we want the quick stuff. We, we tend to revert to our comfortable area. It's uncomfortable to create change. It's uncomfortable sometimes to turn off Netflix or call of duty and go to bed early. Right. So we, we resort to our default and sometimes that can be difficult, but yeah, making those little changes, make the greatest strides. And I think we can see it in exercise too, you know, rather than just do your basic movements, like your press, your pull, your hinge, your lunge, your squat, everyone wants to do like, you know, a banded overhead squat and a BOSU ball. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, how much benefit is that going to get you? One, I, I think we can both agree it's not a very good exercise and there's no such thing as a bad exercise, but could we be doing something that's more beneficial? For sure. Right. But everyone wants to do the fancy stuff when maybe we just need to break down and get you really, really good at doing the basic stuff and then uh, periodically change your, your load and your challenge and so mm -hmm. on and so forth with that. And then we can build from there. So I, I feel like what you've said can be applied across the board. It's, right. um, it's taking baby steps, you know, not trying just to dive in head first where we're, a lot of times we fail. Um, it's great yeah. to commit, but so many people are like, all right, I'm doing this and we're going for it. And they hit it hard, right. For a couple of weeks. And then what happens? They fall flat. Right. Right. Where what you're saying, I think is like wisdom for life. It's like, you know, do the little things really well and you're going to fail, but, uh, uh, identify it, say, Hey, you know what I did? I did fail here. I did struggle, but you know what? I'm going to change that. I'm going to try harder next time. And as long as you can check in with yourself and say, Hey, I tried doing this and you keep trying your best every day, I feel like that, that adds up. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't delude yourself either, right? I think it takes uh, a good amount of uh, self-awareness to look at yourself in the, in the mirror. Uh, the accountability mirror, as David Goggins would say, and you have to look at yourself and be like, did I do what I wanted to do today? Like in, in, in a realistic fashion, right? It's like, these are my check marks or so for the day. It's like, did I get that done? And it's, it is hard. It's tough. Cause like no one wants to, to look at themselves at the end of the day and be like, I did a crap job today. Like I did not, I didn't work out. I didn't, I didn't eat well. I didn't move much. I was on, I was watching Netflix all day long and, and, and that's okay. But you just have to be honest with yourself and, and, you know, you have to understand that you figure out what your goal is. And then once, once you understand what your goal is, then that's where the motivation comes from to do those little things. Right. So once your once your values are in line, uh, with each other, then, then you'll have motivation that doesn't stop. So figure out what your goal is. And for, you know, a recreational athlete, whatever that might be, it's like, Hey, I want to, I want to play pickup basketball twice a week without any pain. Okay. Figure out how to do that. And then just do those things. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if your decisions don't lead you to that goal, then you just don't do it in yeah. a simplistic term. So. I know, I know it's so simple, but yet we all we struggle so much, right? It's tough. So, yep. And I know what's, what's helped me with some of this stuff where I look back and a lot of times I'll have this laundry list of all these things I want to do. And, you know, my list is always bigger than what's actually achievable. Right. And so then you look at your list, like, man, I only got like a quarter or a third of this done. And then you feel like garbage and then you <laughs> blow the whole thing out of the water where um, I forgot what book I read it in, but um, addressing it and saying, okay, you know, what's the top, what's the main thing I want to get done today? Here's some auxiliary things and so on and so forth. Check off the ones you got done but then address the ones and say, Hey, you know what? I didn't do this. That's okay. I'm going to move to next time. Or maybe I tried to do this, 
but I didn't realize it was going to take me a lot longer. I didn't finish it, you know, and then <laughs> addressing the fact that you attempted to do it, right. You tried yeah. to do it and then try again next time. So I feel like that positive affirmation of saying, you know what, I tried to do it rather than, you know what, I just said F it and I'm done. Right. It is, is a good experience because I mean, otherwise you have these lists and then you just, they, you throw them out, you forget them and you're like, all right, that didn't work. I'm done with that. And you just, it's, it's a negative experience because you can't finish your list and, and right. then it just goes to shit. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, cool. I love that. So it's the, the little things, right? So sleep, food, um, the, um, uh, mindset affirmations, if you're spiritual, like prayer or meditation, um, the uh, drinking more water, maybe taking uh, for ergon ergonomic stuff for other desk workers and Zoom and being at home. I've seen an uptick of people having ergonomical problems at the desk because they're not at work and they're sitting on their couch, whatever it may be. So, you know, uh, having ergonomic setup, taking micro breaks, um, going for a walk, um, you know, being able to do all those little things, going to bed an extra, an extra half hour, hour early, getting away from the screen for an hour, right? All those little things we all know, but just picking one, maybe one at a time and making small change. Yeah, it's, I agree with you. It makes the biggest impact. Um, now, what would you say is the, based on injuries that you've seen with the athletes, what would you say is the number one injury tip you could give for our audience based on your experience? Like injury prevention tip. <sighs> I would probably say, um, listen to your body, pay attention to what you feel, um, kind of hone in, hone in on those feelings, but you got to keep moving, right? So typically the stuff that I would see, whether it's, you know, low back stiffness or, um, you know, it's probably everyone's had that at, at some point, right? But like you just mentioned, people are sitting at their desk all day, you know, they're not getting up and going to the water cooler or taking breaks because they're at the office and that's what they have to do to, you know, kind of keep from going insane. Um, you got to, don't stop moving, you know, and the older that you get, and I mean, I'm not very old, I'm 35, um, but I am getting older and, and I for sure notice like, Hey, if I've been in the car all day, I have to get up, I have to do something. And, and, and it's a little thing, whether it's, Hey, go take a 10 minute walk, right? You're developing those habits, but you're going to feel a lot better for it. You know, stretch, whatever your views on, on stretching are, but just, just move, right? Mm -hmm. Explore ranges of motion. Um, you know, if you, if you don't use it, you lose it type of thing, right? If you don't ever put your arms above your head, pretty soon your body's going to be like, you know what? We don't really need that, that capability. So it's going to be really hard to put your arms above your head, right? If you don't ever take your heel to your butt and stretch out your quads, you know what? Your body's going to say, probably don't need that, need that capability anymore. So just, you know, explore those movements. Don't stop moving. Pay attention to your body and make sure that, you know, whatever it is that you're doing is, is in line with your bigger picture of, of what it is that you want to do. If you just want better health, then it probably doesn't have to be too specific, right? But if, like I said, if you want to play basketball a few times a week without pain um, or something a little bit more specific, then make sure that, you know, you're taking the necessary steps to, uh, to get to that goal safely. I love it. So move more. I totally agree. And that's why you see like a lot of our grandparents and such, they can't squat, right? Because I mean, but don't use it. Why would you squat if you don't have to? Yeah. Why would you squat? You just could bend, <laughs> bend over from your back, right? Why would exactly. you, why you squat? There's no point, right? So yeah. Um, it's easier. So let's just do that for sure. And this, we see it all the time. If you don't use it, you lose it. I know it sounds cliche, but it really is so true. It happens. You know? <laughs> right. So no, I love the advice. It's, it's, it's um, definitely true. And um, I'm going to do a little plug for some of our courses that we have. So um, I'll have to tell you about this Skylar, but we made some, um, a lot of the content that we've created, we made some free courses. So it's um, info.reachcaro.com slash courses. And we have a couple on there. We have the back to basics of, basics of movement, the core of the core, like so it's core stuff, and then uh, the body brush and floss course. So basically the reason why I made these is because people, you know, we give this advice like, hey, move more, do this. But some people are like, all right, I need some guidance. I don't, I know, I know that from uh, Little League Baseball, we used to do like a butterfly stretch and a hurdler stretch, right? So what do I do past that? You know, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here we go, right? <laughs> so what are some things we can do? And um, the back to basics is to help with people that are just say, you know, they haven't done movement or exercise in a long time. And they, they're not even sure if they're, their ability of getting up and down off the ground, that course is for them. People that want to learn the true mechanics of the core, as we know, through like DNS um, and, you know, Prague Rehabilitation School. Um, there are those concepts are in that core of the core course. And then the body brush and floss is kind of for those people who are like, you know, I want to do daily stretching and I want to, you know, be more mobile. But, you know, I've, I've been telling the, 
to get my hamstrings stretched or stretch my hamstrings and it's not, it's not working, right? So what's something else I can do for my overall body? And so that course goes through all the different variations and think ways you can brush and floss your body to keep it mobile in all different directions. So that's a little, um, Anyone can go on there and get a free course. It's an email course. So basically once every couple of days you get an email of a new concept and you watch the video and you go from there. So that's available for people because you know, we get the same advice, just move more. But then people are like, all right, well then how do I move? Right. And it's like to, to us, it's like, I don't know, do something, pick up something, carry something, lift something. Right. But, yeah. um, you know, that could end up bad too. So <laughs> what's that? But that could end up bad too if you are completely in the middle of it with that. So, good point. You're right. You can't just give general advice like that because they're like, oh, well, you know, uh, Skylar or Dr. Burr told, or told me just to go lift something. And I went and grabbed this big old thing here and I threw my back out. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, it gives a little bit more guidance regarding that. So, cool, man. Um, so, that's it regarding that one. Otherwise, um, do you have anything else to, to uh, leave our audience with? Yeah. So as you were talking, the, what the thought that was going through my mind is that, you know, I, I think it's important that we, we become kind of masters of, of our own body. Right. So I don't, you know, whatever it is, whoever's listening to this, like whatever it is, is at your profession, you always want to be better at your profession. If you're a lawyer, you always want to be better. You're always working on that. If you're an accountant, whatever it may be, I find that not a whole lot of people really take that same approach with their physical health. Right. And you don't have to be, that doesn't mean you have to be a bodybuilder. That doesn't mean you have to be a power lifter, whatever, you know, physique comp, competition, mm -hmm. nothing like that. But you just have to, like you said, use those courses, use the, you know, use the, the resources that you can and, and start to become a master of your own body because you only get one of them, right? You want to take as best care of it as you possibly can. And personally, it doesn't sound like a very good idea to just kind of leave that to chance. So. Yeah, for sure. And we know too that uh, we can't just say like, oh, well, if my hip wears out or my knee wears out, I'll just get surgery, right? That doesn't take care of everything. So um, that's, uh, I don't know how to describe that, but that's one of those like, you know, you panaceas out there things that will take care of everything it's again it's, it's that one big thing we think is gonna be the magic bullet when in reality it's all the little things that we do that add up and it goes back to that again and uh i thought about this before i mean it's probably a topic for another time but you know this stuff should really be in our school curriculum you know what i mean like how do you actually squat how do you actually deadlift and why is it purposeful for life and why would you need these mechanics for the rest of your life you know so because now we're in a world where you know industrial revolution we used our bodies. Work, exercise was work. Work was exercise. Right. Now in the, the tech boom, we, you know, we, didn't ha we have all these gyms now because people don't – work is not moving. Work is sitting in front of a computer like we're doing now, you know? Right. So, I mean, how to do it, I don't know. But somehow be getting, you know, uh, general physical education outside of recess or you know, a lot of schools have gotten rid of phys ed. Um, or, you know, or there's just, you just play dodgeball and stuff. You know, there's not really much true physical education there. Um, skills that people need for the rest of their life, that stuff that I teach people now that are in their middle age that I believe they should have learned in school, but you know, but we're not taught that stuff, unfortunately. So but that's what we're here. That's what we're here for, there for, right? It's, it's an uphill battle for sure, but it's definitely one worth fighting. And, you know, and even if it's, Hey, starting, obviously you start in your household, start, then, you know, get to your neighborhood and then your local community and keep growing outwards. But, you know, keep fighting the good fight, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, it's going to keep us busy. That's for sure. You know, yeah. post COVID and all that. I mean, um, there's plenty of people that need guidance and uh, are going to have injuries and need help with that stuff. So, and that's what we're here for here to help. So Absolutely. wonderful. Cool, man. Well, Hey, thank you so much, Skylar. I appreciate it. Um, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Good. Take care.